uh, my internet's not working. It um, craps out a lot for some reason. For a while it wasn't working at all, so I bought a new modem. And as soon as I took the um, new modem out of the, uh, well, as soon as I brought it home, all of a sudden my computer magically started working again. Now it um, still craps out, but beforehand it was like for hours, and now it's just like half an hour. But I just tried to upload my YouTube video on the SCA and it didn't work, and then so I thought it might be an error of my video, but then when I tried to log into Facebook, it froze. So, I'm going to continue to make some more videos since I have some free time, since my little sister is watching House of Anubis with my mom, and um, I really should be reading or something. But I'm really interested in making some more videos, so that's what I'm going to do. So, uh, this video, uh, video is going to be on um, folk, books on folk magic, because I practice folk magic, and I only have a couple books. I, a lot of what I get is from online and from other people. Uh, one of the huge things, or one of the huge uh, best sites that I use is Lucky Mojo, um, Cat Ironwood, um, I always thought it was your own wood, but I think it's Ironwood, has a lot of free information on Lucky Mojo and Hoodoo, and I'll post a link on here, because, um, so you can find it, because I know if, when you first go to her site, it's um, her store, and then her informational things, and there's some other stuff too, and she also has like discussion boards, so if you're interested in Hoodoo, um, I'd really suggest going to the site. Um, and also, I have her book, the Hoodoo Herb and Root Magic book. It's really good. I use it all the time when I'm making different things. Um, when I first started making things, I was using Scott Cunningham's Encyclopedia of Herbs. I think that's a correct name. I can go get it from the, one of the bookcases in my room. But uh, I don't really want to discuss that book right now. I want to discuss this. So, um, this book has so much information and so many different uh, ways to use herbs, uh, certain herbs. And then there's also a lot of herbs in here that I've never heard used in different magic. I'm sure like all herbs can be used in magic and all these different things, but like um, Scott Cunningham's book and a couple other um, pagany type herb books don't really go into detail about it. Plus I like hoodoo because it's not just like love and light, this is for love, and this is for love, and this is for love, and this is for protection. Everything is love and protection. I'm like, there's more to these herbs than just love and protection. I want all herbs to do that, but um, I know that there's more to it. There's more ways to use them. That's why I like hoodoo, and I like their take on things, and they're not like afraid to draw a lover or if somebody's totally screwing with you, um, banish them out of your life. or put a little hot foot powder in their track to keep them um, out of your way. Um, well, because I've got, I started getting interested in hoodoo, I bought this book, and I haven't really gone through it that well much because it's so delicate and old. I think this one is, I think I bought the 1934 version. Let's see. Uh, I don't want to sit here and read it, but 1938, and it smells amazing. I love the smell of old books. That's why people are like, oh, you like books? Why don't you get a Kindle or something? And I'm like, no, absolutely not. The smell of books, the paper, the feel of it in your hands, it's its part of the experience. So um, I'm hoping I can get some more um, folk magic goodness out of Legends of Incense, Herbs, and Oil Magic by Louise de Clermont. And uh, I found that for really cheap. I found one copy was like a hundred bucks or something, and another one was like some other like ridiculous amount, like a thousand dollars or something super crazy and this one was like I think it was like 10 bucks yeah it was like ridiculously cheap I think the person just wanted to pass it on in a way and um so we got those two books I've also got uh the red church it's about powwow or braukarai I think that's how you pronounce it which is a like Pennsylvania Dutch, Pennsylvania Dutch German folk magic sort of thing and it talks about uh, let's see it, uh, there's a crap ton of stuff in this book. I keep saying crap. There's a lot of stuff in here. Different healing techniques, different things that they do. Um, how the Braukerei works, which is like the practitioner, the powwow. And it's really interesting because I'm German, so some of the things that they use, I can, like the way they pronounce things or the way they word things in like the, the like super slangy German that they use is I can, um, sometimes translate it. I don't speak German fluently. I took it two semesters of it and I grew up hearing it but I don't I don't really speak it uh, but I know I'm getting yelled at and I'm getting cussed at or I'm in trouble when when I hear it in German um, another one I just got in the mail like two days ago so I haven't even like looked through it yet is Science Cures and Witcheries by Gerald Milnes 
and I know an uh, awesome group of people on Yahoo, a lot of them are into folk magic, and this is German Appalachian folklore, and I think there should be some uh, practices in here as well, that one of the women does, hadn't even heard about it, so she told one of the other girls in the group, and I guess they're excited, and then um, it was like $35, though, for this little book. It's like textbook status, expensive, kind of. Um, but since it was free for me, using my U, uh, Yule gift cards, I decided to get it. So I'm really excited about getting to that soon. And then, um, I don't really know if I should be sharing this one because I don't know how how accurate her um, her different spells are in here. But I like looking through her books, and I don't know if that makes me like totally fluffy or something. But I'm going to share them anyway. They're Judica Ill's books. I got the short little version because she was selling all her. Uh, they're selling all the uh, different uh, element encyclopedia things at Barnes and Noble for a while for like ten bucks each. Like the there's one on um, symbols and alphabets, and there's also one on magical creatures that I have. Um, I know there's a huge one, the Five Thousand Spell Book. We have that here, but the cover's not on it, so there's no point in me showing you a big green book. Um, there's a lot of interesting stuff in there, stuff that you could work with. Like if you're a pagan or Wiccan, or I mean you're a pagan. But I don't know, there's some hoodoo formulas that she has in here. I don't know how real they are to um, the hoodoo formulas used by people who actually practice hoodoo. Um, I know, that's kind of dumb of me to say though, because I guess it changes by region too. Because some people, um, when they make like, for instance, Van Van Oil, they'll use just uh, lemongrass. Just use lemongrass essential oils or put some lemongrass and oil in. It's Van Van Oil. Or some others will um, use five different Asian grasses like uh, Palmarosa, Citronella, Lemongrass, Vetiver, and I always forget the other, the other one's Ginger Grass. I hope I didn't mention that already. And some of them are also like again, exchange one of those for patchouli. So um, I make mine with five different Asian grasses. And then the essential oils and the herbs mixed in there. And um, so I guess I can't really down her stuff. Some people will say, no, that's not the correct way. But I guess there is no real co correct way. I know there's some that are set in stone, supposedly. But there's so many people trying to discover hoodoo that are on the internet and everything like myself. who are just reading books and talking to people online and don't have an actual teacher or learned it from their mother or their grandmother or their grandfather or their family or where they lived. So I don't, um, I know there's some people who say there's one way, but I, I think as it's regrowing, I, maybe we should call it like neo-hoodoo. There's a different ways to do things. And I'm seeing it, like I went to Botanica today. Uh, we have a Botanica with old mama roots here, which is pretty cool. And they had a ton of hoodoo stuff. I was really amazed because I had, I've been there before, but I didn't really explore the shop too much. And so, and the trip was kind of hazy in my memory. But there's so many different hoodoo oils, but they all look like they're made of just essential oils and not the uh, herbs and essential oils and everything like I uh, I make. Because I uh, I think that's the right way to make the hoodoo oils. Just be able to see what's in it, and it's more of like the energy than what it is what it smells like. I know some uh, other hoodoo people will say that it's about the smell too, but I guess it just depends on who you ask. So um, those are some of the folk magic books I wanted to share. I know there's a lot of different like neo-pagan books out there that I guess you could say are folk magic because there's folk magic elements in there but they always tie and connect it to ritual and I don't practice ritual in my regular practice I just do what I do and I'm done with it I don't cast a circle or anything because I do it all in my bedroom usually or like somewhere close and I just connect with like the, the local spirits the the genus loci if you want to call them that instead or I try to and then my house, my energy is so in here, like, so, it's like in the walls now, because I've been here for so long. And I do cleansings regularly and everything, so I don't feel like, I feel like I'm, I am my own circle. I'm not, I don't need to create one. And my time's getting really close, so I'm going to cut it off now and then start another video stream.